in terms of the refund for the FSB, that's just not going to happen. We don't even have uh, a system in place for that because you're supposed to go in and cancel your subscription if you knew you were going to have the vehicle. So you're blaming me for this? I'm not blaming you. I'm just telling you why they're not going to refund you for that. And before we start this off, I have to give credit where credit is due. A long time ago, I whined and complained about how Tesla didn't give you the diagnostic tools to fix your own car. And you know what? I only had to do it for five short years, and it's finally here. If you go here, you can download the Toolbox app, plug your car in, and finally troubleshoot your car on your own for a small fee, but it's money well spent. This is going to help many people, and I'm glad that it happened. Now, I've realized, however, that most Tesla owners don't work on or modify their cars, so this doesn't apply to them, and they mostly looked at me for the last several years like this. <laughs> That's my third monocle this week. I simply must stop being so horrified. But the ones that do work on their own cars, they get it and understand the right to repair, so progress is definitely being made. And honestly, now, well, they are killing it. They aren't a quirky little tech startup they used to be. They delivered quarter of a million cars in a quarter. GM delivered 25 EVs, and of those 25 EVs, 24 just bought them while they were waiting to get their Teslas delivered. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it, I really stopped talking about Tesla stuff because I was clearly the villain when I was talking about how poor their service and build quality was. No one really believed me because they just saw, oh, look, a black guy complaining about something again. Wow, look at him. He built his entire success complaining about the company that helped him become who he is. He should respect them and turn a blind eye to their issues. I mean, okay, I don't know. Maybe it's me that the people want and they don't care about fixing Tesla stuff. I made a video taking a man's wife to dinner and it was more successful than the majority of the Tesla videos of that year. I don't know. Maybe people watch the channel for me and my band of merry men. People say I should stop talking about Tesla. It's kind of like when someone says you don't like this country, then leave. No, that's not fixing anything. You stay and you make it better. It's like a marriage at any given issue. Do you just give up? Well, yeah, if she's ugly, but you stay and work it out otherwise. You know she's not the prettiest girl in the world, but hold on to her for a little bit and just try things out. So today is just a little update on Tesla service in general. Now, a million things have happened since I made a Tesla video. And if you remember, it's been some time because I haven't really thought about them much because I own a Porsche 911 now. <laughs> Listen to me very carefully. It is a fine automobile. It doesn't have anywhere near the tech that a Tesla does, but it's so fun, it doesn't need Netflix and video games to distract you from an interior that looks like an iPad on an Ikea desk. You will never beat a 911 and say to yourself, wow, I wish this thing drove itself, not Tesla tech, and it doesn't need it. But every once in a while, I'll get in the old Model X to get an idea of what the future is supposed to be. Someone described the future perfectly. The year is 2040. You're eating from your weekly rationed tube of cricket paste in your self-driving electric car that only allows you to get it from work and back at the speed limit. You get home and you're greeted by your non-binary they friend as your child comes in saying thinking is a crime. Well, it's time to get in my self-driving car. Oh, the air suspension compressor failed. The vehicle will not raise. Let's take it to Tesla. Open the app, set up an appointment. The nearest service center is not taking appointments for a month, so I have to drive to one that's 25 miles away. No big deal, because I have a Porsche 911. <laughs> I'll wait till my nearest service center has availability. Now, in the future, you apparently have to have a second car. I don't care who you are. Apparently, you need to have a second gasoline car. If you have a three and a Y, then you're probably all set. But an S and an X? I don't even know if Tesla sells the X and the S anymore. By the way, that was sarcasm for the smooth brained out there. Okay, $700 estimate. Sorry we had part shortages. Blame it on current events, blah, blah, blah. Come back a week later. Sir, your car's a piece of garbage, and that will be $3,000 because when your air suspension compressor failed, it also took out your two front air shocks at $900 a piece on your four-year-old car. How would you like to pay for this? Well, I will show you how I will pay for this by making a website with Squarespace. It's easy to claim a domain or URL like www, like wow, 
thank goodness I decided to drive this thing again.com or www.ithoughtamericancars was supposed to be cheaper to fix than germancars.com. So then you can create a custom site that matches your style and enthusiasm. Check out these page templates because they'll make your web page look better than the way Tesla owners' faces look when you tell them that you don't drive a Tesla. Head to www.squarespace.com slash richrebuilds to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Shout out to Squarespace for making platforms for people's passions, even if they aren't electric. Now, as much fun as it is pointing out the obvious holes in Tesla, I want to make this clear that the people working on their cars, it's not your fault. Remember the Tesla that wasn't stopping well? It's because at the factory, they forgot to put on a brake pad. I'm not even mad at the factory for messing that up. A company pumping out 250,000 cars is an amazing feat. And sometimes you have to make a human sacrifice or two for the greater good. If you truly believe that Tesla wants to save the earth by selling you cars, and it's not about money or shareholders or profits, then I have a bridge to sell you. Why do we rejoice when the stock price goes up? Is that for every endangered species of animal that we saved? No, it's because someone's making money and their business and they're rushing cars out to make sales and appease shareholders. Missing brake pads, so what? They sold 250,000 cars in a quarter and people are going to buy them anyways. Now, while not much has changed, Something did change. The fanboy sentiment. Yes, there are still fanboys of Tesla and there always will be, but the thoughts towards Tesla from the fanboys are changing and not really in a good way. The people that have cherished Tesla since day one are starting to wake up a little bit. Let's hear what they have to say. Yeah, my Model X seemed like state-of-the-art rocket ship of a car. And now the problem is there's been, you know, some service issues. Like right before the new year, I had a problem with the middle section seats. One of them wouldn't move back properly. Not a big deal, I went on YouTube, I tried to look up the answer, fussed with it for a bit, couldn't figure it out. So what did I do? Put in a service call with Tesla. Really easy on the app. It said I'd have to wait a few days. I was like, whatever. Then on January 4th, the day they said they were gonna come out, I get this weird message on the app that says, we've rescheduled you to January 4th. I'm like, but it is January 4th. So I was like, whatever. But January 4th comes and goes, no tech service guy shows up. So that was weird. Then end of the day, I get a message from Tesla saying they've rescheduled me for January 31st. They added a month onto my service schedule and nothing got fixed. Now I'm pretty upset. Now I'm driving around with the car where I can't put people in the second row seats. Most times when I do bring it in for service, there's no loaner car available. And usually it takes longer than it was supposed to to get the car back because they're waiting for parts. And this is what I'm talking about. Tesla service has really gotten bad. You're not going to like reveal my identity, are you? Right? We're cool? It's a really nice plant. Is this roast Costa Rican? It's amazing. Hey guys, my name is Will Prouse. I have an off-grid solar power uh, YouTube channel, and I want to share my experience because this thing has given me so many problems, it's ridiculous. I drove this car for a single day, only 280 miles, and the main drive unit failed, and the door handles broke, and it did not come with a floorboard for the trunk. So I made some videos complaining about it, and people have called me all sorts of crazy names. It's the most disliked video I've ever made on my channel, and I've made like over a thousand videos with all of my channels. And they're saying that I'm tied to big oil, and they say that I'm a liar. They're saying that I'm, I'm getting paid to say this. And I'm like, wait a second, guys. How am I tied to big oil? I'm trying to get people off of oil with off-grid solar. I am the last person on the face of this planet to be connected to big oil. And the Tesla fanboys have all these conspiracy theories. And it's, it's completely nuts. This car broke on the first day, and I'm gonna complain about it. But technically, they did fix this car. It took them three weeks. So get this, I had the car for one day, it took seven days to get the problem diagnosed. We had no idea it was a main drive unit failure. And then it took two weeks after that to get it repaired. I had it for one day, and then they take it away for three weeks. 
Isn't that crazy? That's not normal. With my first Model S from 2014, I used your videos, Rich, to actually fix my door handle. I had the 10 millimeter wrench between the glass and the metal. It was an awful design. I also had to change out the 12 volt battery and lots of other problems with that car. But then the service center said that they could do a buyback on this car because I was so mad about it. And then they said they would take 10 days for that process to occur. Well, 20 days later, they denied it. And that charger is connected to an off-grid solar power system. I charge this off-grid. So how do you guys think I'm connected to big oil? That is just beyond me. Now, if you want a car that actually works as advertised and will be a lot of fun, you should get a Porsche. They're well-made cars. They work as advertised. I have zero silly issues with this thing. And if something breaks, you can fix it. They'll actually fix the car and no one will get mad at you. No one will guilt trip you and say, oh, you're part of big oil. No, they just fix the thing and it works. How are you doing there? This is Quentin from Tesla Service. Hi, Quentin. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Stephen? Not too bad. Just so you know, for transparency, I am recording this phone call. Okay. We started this diagnostic July 10th of 2020. And All right. We knew that I needed a seat and the sensor for the seat. They said the whole seat had to be replaced for the airbag sensor. Right. It's taken over a year to receive the seat for the car. Um, I just really, you know, we're doing all we can do, but we're really not focused on fixing the parts for current Tesla owners right now. I, I apologize, but it's, it's really all we can, we can say about it here. There's only so much we can do about getting our, our new parts to you. And uh, Teslas are the, the safest vehicles. Um, so just trust, you know, in the system that, that you've, that you bought into. And, and that's, like I said, I mean, I, I'd love to help you, but that's just, that's the, we just don't have any parts. Uh, okay. Well, when can we reschedule? What's up, dude? <clears throat> I'm in 11 right now. Well, thanks for letting me know what car you're in. That was, uh, random. But um, you'll never believe this. The Tesla guy just told me that it's more important. Ah, yes. I forgot to send up my packages of parts. How did this happen? Do I have ADHD? Yes, I do. Can anyone see that I am thinking my thoughts or do I just like the process and time that it takes and then fighting with carriers over pricing? Fortunately, there's ShipStation, which makes it quick, easy, and convenient. Every time I have parts to send or even like that time I started a blossoming pet rock company... <laughs> I am like 100,000 other sellers that use ShipStation for this growing business. They work with all of the major carriers and give you exclusive discounts on UPS, USPS shipping, and small businesses can now access the same rates, usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies, which we don't even have a fortune or are we in the top 500 of anything at all. So go to ShipStation.com slash Rich Rebuilds for your 60-day free trial and make ship happen. And I didn't make that up. But I will pretend I did because I like clever puns and slogans and it makes me look cool. Just do it. Thank you for calling Tesla. This is Talos speaking in the monitored and recorded line. Who do I have the pleasure of assisting today? Yeah, first, uh, I'd like to, like to let you know that I'm recording the call as well. Sure. In Massachusetts. Um, okay, so uh, just real quick. So so I've, I've had kind of an ongoing dispute with Tesla um, because I, I have a new a new Plaid, uh, Model S Plaid, you know, $140,000 car. Uh, that was delivered in July and it's been broken for about 60 ish percent of the time that I've owned it. It's, it's, it's a, a lemon. It, basically I was told to hold tight and keep it in my driveway for about a month. And then they finally took it in for service at the end of November. And it's been there ever since. As I was looking at my credit card statements that I've continued to be charged for the FSD subscription during that time, which I wasn't aware of. There's not like monthly emails or anything. And I was under the impression that, you know, since the car is literally undrivable, unusable, that this would not be charged or that it would be refunded in some way. Um, but apparently it is not. And I was wondering if that could be refunded. Um, I mean, at this point, no, right. The, the FSD is a subscription service for literally exactly that to be used. Um, you, you have to cancel that if you didn't want to use it. It's not something that just comes off just because you're disputing something with Tesla. Um, would it be well, able to refund that you've been paying the subscription? Well, I, I apologize. It's not that I'm disputing something with Tesla. The car is broken, right? So 
I, yes, I paid for a subscription, but the, the, the thing that I was buying as part of the subscription, the use of FSD wasn't delivered to me because the car was broken. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's, that's why you're supposed to go onto your account and, you know, stop paying for the subscription. Right. I mean, that's that I could see why you would say that if A, I remembered that that was the case and B, if my subscription date actually lined up with the times of service, but I would lose at least half a month, if not more. Um, and C, just realistically, right, they've been stringing me along for weeks and weeks and weeks saying, yeah, we're, we're going to get it in. Yeah, we're just waiting on the part. Yeah, it should be no problem. Yeah, we think we really fixed it this time. Right. I, I have no way of knowing the actual completion date. It's always like four days away, but four days never comes. Um, so uh, realistically, how am I supposed to do this? Am I just supposed to say, well, oh, I don't you... trust any of the estimates that Tesla gives me, so I should cancel this thing? I mean, I thought this would be automatic. I mean, I, again, I can, I, can transfer you to, I can transfer you to service so that you can talk to them about, you know, service going on in your vehicle. But in terms of the refund for the FSD, that's just not going to happen. We don't even have uh, a system in place for that because you're supposed to go in and cancel your subscription if you knew you were going to have the vehicle. Um, so, I mean, they're not well, going to refund you for I that. We don't know. have a system to refund that. But, but you you understand, I didn't know, right? Like, I didn't know how long it was going to be broken. It's not possible for me to know that. It's not possible for me to know how long it will take Tesla to get apart or anything like that. I, I can't But it, is, it that. is possible for you to go onto your account and cancel your subscription. You're, you're blaming me for this? Really? My my hundred plus thousand dollar car has been broken for most of the time I ordered it, and you guys happen to get a credit I'm, card. I'm not it. blaming you. I'm just telling you why they're not going to refund you for that. Right, but you can't legally charge me for something you didn't deliver. So I can understand things taking longer than expected, as they are in the shop, and that you weren't able to be able to use those services. However, it was still in your ability to be able to cancel the subscription at any time. As stated on our website, we do not provide refunds for full self-driving subscriptions in any manner. Right, but, but literally it was not delivered. And of course it renews on the 6th and the car, the car was supposed to be delivered around that. I, I, I mean, this, you, you see my point here. I mean, I understand what your policy is, but that doesn't mean the policy is right. You didn't deliver the product, but you still charge me for it. And it's not legal. You guys are really going to burn goodwill over 400 bucks. It's, it's not service. That's, I, I don't know what that is. That's, that's kind of sociopathic, I would think. Unfortunately, we are not, we will not be offering a refund for the full self-driving subscription. So you're just going to steal the money. Where you're from coming from? This was, these are the terms that were in place when you purchased the subscription. This is our policy. It is stated on our website, and we won't be moving from this. I'm happy to it's, rotate your feedback on your, on your account, but there's not any refund that we will be offering for this. But you do understand you didn't deliver it, right? Like, I, I paid for full self-driving subscription. The subscription was not delivered because the car, no. with the car that you delivered did not work, yet you guys continued to charge me for it charge me for something I literally could not use because it was broken. It's not that I didn't want right. to use it. I could not use it because you didn't deliver it. If you were not able to use it, it could have been canceled. That's not something that we, a cancellation is not something that we initiate on our end unless we're not able to collect payment. I mean, this, to be honest, this feels like one of those many situations with Tesla where the policy is the policy until there's enormous public pressure and you guys change the policy, but this is obviously not tenable. Uh, this is this is not a, a, a justifiable policy. It is the one that we have in place, though, and we will be following it. Wow, I'm just I'm just, I, I, yeah, I really don't have words. This is this is this is crazy behavior and, and a crazy crazy way to treat loyal customers. Um, most companies in this. Space, I think, would have a policy in which refunds can be issued for any reason below a certain level because that's how you keep customers. But the policy here is we got your money and we're going to keep it. Again, this is the policy that we have in place. I understand where you're coming from. And, again, if there was something more that I could do, I would absolutely do it. 
but unfortunately, this is our policy, and we do not move from it. All right. Well, uh, thanks, I guess, and uh, I hope you have a good day. You too. Bye. Sucks to be that guy. Suck it up, big man. You spent $140,000 on a car. What's another 400 bucks? You can afford it. Am I right, fanboys? But honestly, who do you think was right here? The customer or Tesla? And as angry as some of the fanboys might get watching this, blah, blah, my car has never had a problem in the years I've had it, blah, blah, blah. To that I say, give it time. None of this matters anyways, though, and here's why. Tesla knows it has poor service. They also know that poor service does not equate to more revenue or a loss in revenue because Tesla can barely keep up with the demand as it is. What I'm saying is, regardless of the poor service and support, people will buy them anyways. Case in point, as much as everyone has complained about these cars in the video, they all still own one, don't they? As for me, I own one too, but... I don't really think about how bad it is anymore because, well, you know.